I'm here today at Gold Valley Lakes in Aldershot to do some skimmer fishing on the pole. There's plenty of bigger, more mature commercials like this one up and down the country that are full of fish like skimmers, big roach and hybrids, even the odd perch that are fed all summer but ignored. So you can have a great day's winter sport here come the colder months. We're on the Gold Lake itself today. All the lakes here at Gold Valley have got plenty of silverfish in them, but the Gold Lake is particularly well renowned for great silverfish sport in the winter months. Plenty of carp in here too, you know, there's a few carp anglers here today targeting the bigger fish, a couple of match style anglers here targeting like the match style carp fishing as well, but can't wait to get out there on a long pole and get stuck into some great skimmer sport. Because we're on a commercial and the fish have seen a lot of pellets throughout the summer months, I think it's important that you build a fish meal element into your baiting approach and I'm going to do that with my ground bait. So I've got a nice dark sweet fish meal mix here. What actual one it is, I don't think really matters. As long as you're confident in it and it's that darkish colour, I think you're going to get on all right. In that ground bait, I look to put some casters and dead maggots. Dead maggots because they lay there, they're nice and still, similar to casters, but they're soft. And casters gives it that bit of crunchy element. All big fish like casters, especially the silver ones. So I'm going to definitely put some casters into my mix as well. Also casters, they're great for loose feeding over the top when the water's calm and there's no tow. Drags fish into your swim through the noise and the casters actually falling through the water are going to help draw fish in as well. So another must have for your bait. Also I've got a few live maggots. If really nothing's happening, I feel like I need a few wriggling baits in the swim, I'll start to introduce a few live maggots to try and kick things off. But I'd rather feed dead inert baits because I think they're better for bigger fish. And the last thing I've got is just a few fluoro pinkies. All there for is to put a little tipper on the hook or two of them on the hook if I feel like I need that bright hook bait to get a bite. But I won't feed any of those. I'd rather feed the bigger baits to try and catch the bigger fish. You'll notice there's no pellets at all in my bait selection. And in my mind, they'd be you definitely catch fish on them, but A, you run the risk of attracting carp in your swim, which I don't think you want to do because it unsettles all the big silvers disrupts you and if you're fishing a silverfish match they don't count and to be honest I'd rather feed a bait i.e a maggot or a caster or a dead maggot I can put on the hook in my mind it makes them easier to catch because they're already eating the bait that you've got on the hook you know you can hook a four mil feed pellet you can hook a micro pellet but to be honest it's far too fiddly for me I just want to undo my bag of maggots or casters put them in a bait box get them in a the swim and catch some fish got a couple of rigs set up for today's session both swims are identical depth, so a lot of time for things like that. First one is the one more aimed at, when there's a few fish in the swim, it's what I'd term for the day is the positive rig. It's a 0.8 gram float. It's about, I don't know, six foot deep where we're fishing today. So 0.8 gram float, get it to the bottom nice and quickly and it'd be nice and stable when it's there. I've got a DT Nevis float that is, nice, no nonsense float. Use them a lot to be fair in all sorts of different situations. They just fish nice. I've got a bulk and two droppers, number nine droppers, because if anything happens, if I get a lift bite, which is quite common when skimmers fishing, I'm sure you know, I want to see it clearly and positively. So two number nine droppers, six inch hook length. So I've got about five and a half inches between the two droppers, about six and a half inches up to the bulk, just to make sure it falls nice and you don't get any tangles. Line wise, I've got 014 hybrid power mono main line, a nice durable main line, but not too stiff not too light just right for me for a commercial silverfish rig 014 especially with a bulk rig uh, hook length it's an 09 fluorocarbon we're actually looking to bring more fluorocarbon sizes into the senex range so this is an 09 one we're testing at the minute six inches as i say when fishing for bigger stamp fish like we here to, are here today i'm hoping all the fish we catch will sort of be 12 ounce plus so six inches is a nice length for those nice stamp fish to me ended with a 16 f1 pellet hook nice big hook 
I don't like using small hooks when skimmer fishing, to be honest. I've had some bad experiences of fish coming off in the past on small hooks, so I'd rather get the odd bite less, but land more fish that I hook. That's the way I look at it anyway. The other rig is what we could term as the light version for the day. It's the same line as on the other rig and the same hook length, but the float is a 414 carbon stem version. It's got a fibre tip and the shot and pattern is more strung out. It's not strung out completely over the rig because I want it to get to the bottom reasonably quickly. So there's sort of like a staggered strung out bulk of number 10s starting, I don't know, probably two foot from the hook down to on top of the hook length. And the elastic on the lighter rig is a number six solid through the full top kit. And the elastic on the heavier bulked rig is an orange microbore hollow elastic. The reason for that is on the lighter rig, I'm expecting if I'm fishing with that rig, the fish are gonna be feeding a bit more carefully. I'll be striking a little bite and I could possibly be catching smaller fish. I want that lighter elastic. And the, if I'm using this bulked rig, I'll probably be catching a bigger fish. So I want to set the hook that bit better with the stiffer elastic and not playing for as long with the light elastics. I'll be catching bigger fish, simple as that. So two rigs for two different situations while you're fishing the same swim. Let's get fishing. fishing today with a square ergonomic pole protector. This one's for a sphere pole, but they also come supplied with the Zeiten poles. And what they are is a square dolly butt section, if you like. They're ever so strong, but they don't make your pole feel like it's got a scaffold tube stuck up the back. I've fished with dolly butts before in the past. It throws the whole pole out. And to be honest, at times they're not worth using because it makes your lovely two, 3,000 pound pole feel like a two or 300 pound pole. But these ones, really don't affect how the pole feels. They give it an extra security when you're striking or when you're shipping back through a bush. And with them having flattish edges on them, they make it ever so comfortable to hold. They're brilliant in the wind because it stops your pole twisting. You don't realize, until you use one of these flat edge pole protectors, you don't realize how much your pole twists in the wind. I didn't, I certainly didn't until I started using them. It really allows you to like knuckle down your elbow, hold on tight and keep your rig super stable. At the end of the day, it's gonna catch you more fish. Each of the pole protectors comes with a EVA bung at either end. So it just makes it easier to put into this end and protects the back end that little bit more. These square protectors are available for the 13 meter section. And there's another one that will fit in both the 14 and the 16 meter section of your sphere or Zeiten pole. This product comes in handy whether you're fishing for lots of fish in the summer, shallow fishing for example, or if you're waiting for a long time for a bite in the winter, sitting there static, that flat edge helps you out in all manner of different situations. Feeding wise today, what I've done is I've fed a couple of swims in a couple of different ways and I'll explain the reason for that now. I've fed roughly at 10 o'clock and two o'clock, both at 14 and a half meters on the pole, but I've fed one line quite negatively and one line quite positively. The reason for that is, is if it's a very hard day, you might only get a few bites. So that line that I fed negatively at the start, just with one ball of ground bait with a few bits and bobs in it, that'll come into its own. Vice versa, if it turns into be a bit of a red letter day, the line that I fed with five cups of bait, I fed um, five 250 mil cups of ground bait, loose, quite damp ground bait, pressed into the pole cup with the loose offerings in as well, and sort of spread them in a bit of air, bit of an area over about the size of the head of the keep net, if you like. Just so if I get quite a few fish in a the swim, they can move about. And obviously cupping it in loose, it's gonna spread a bit of a wider area when, when it, by the time it reaches the bottom as well. Fishing wise, I'm expecting the negatively fed swim to be the first one to get bites on, but you never know. It might just be a day where the fish wanna sit over a lot of bait, even if you don't catch a lot. So the positive swim will come into its own. But having those two swims, it's got a couple of advantages, as I, as I say, depend on how the fish want to feed. And also, even if it's a really good day and you catch most of your fish on a positive swim, it will need a rest at some point. That, that's just the, the way fishing is. So you can drop onto your negative line, get a couple of quick bites when you've re-fed your positive line and then go back to clatter them on that good line. So a couple of swims, a couple of different options, and this gives you a resting option for whatever the day throws at you.
just started to get a few indications now. On the uh, more negatively fed line, and I've just brought the bump bar into play. It was, had the odd tiny little indication, it made me think there's something there. Got my bump bar right, so my light rig was being held dead still. I caught a good skimmer right away. Probably about two pound, nice fish. So um, the bump bar's helped as it often does. You, you don't realize your float's moving in until you trap it still in a bump bar. The amount of difference it makes is, uh, is unbelievable at times, to be honest, but it's happened so many times to me over the years. If you're doing this sort of fishing a lot, it's uh, certainly worth investing in a bump bar, this front bar. The amount of times it will help you will be untrue. Even today, you know, it looks flat calm here, but there's a bit of tow on the water. And um, with the best will in the world, you let your float go with it a little bit. So you just got to hold it dead still sometimes. Sometimes it's better letting your float go with the flow, but other days the fish won't accept anything that's not absolutely static so having both in your armory is definitely key. I've been fishing a good two hours now and we've been doing a bit of filming obviously so I've not been fishing all the time but that is key that you need to leave your feed to settle so if you're coming for a session on a, one of the big waters like this don't just feed your bait and expect to catch straight away and for me, probably one of the worst things you can do is sit there not getting bites because your pole's over the water all the time. You're not going to let the fish move in. Normally, the uh, the bigger, more mature commercials like this are not normally the most coloured of waters, so you need to treat it a bit more like a natural water. You need to let the fish settle, especially the nice stamped fish that you're hoping to catch. Let them settle, let them get confident, then try and catch them. As I said before, you normally Oh, oh, that's a little dink then. There's a few there now, but they're tricky today, but it makes it nice when you do whack into one. It's a bit, it's a bit more rewarding. So yeah, it's, um, it's been a tricky day so far, but you don't know, you know, it's still only early yet. We're still only two and a bit hours into the session. I am hoping that that more positively fed line will come good in a bit. There you go, there's another one. There's Odden kicking about now. That was just as the float trimmed up again, that one. I was looking at you, to be fair, so I didn't really see that one well enough. It's only a small fish, this one. I don't know what it is yet. What we got? A little hybrid, that is. That's a good sign. Shows there's a few fish mooching about. Normally, famous last words this will be, but normally... When you start getting bites on a big lake like this, it means they've moved in. So, as long as I don't do nothing stupid or the carp don't ruin the party, we, uh, we should be able to tick along for the rest of the session now. And hopefully that positively fed line will come into its own when they really start having a chew. But this negatively fed line, I'll keep on this for a bit. It will need resting at some point, I'm sure, because there's hardly any bait there. I've only fed that one ball of bait still from the start. So I'll keep on loose feeding over the top of my um, more positively fed line. I started doing that a while ago, just because, it's, it, like I said, it's been a hard day. It's quite, well, very still. So it felt like I needed to have some noise going on to the water and some bait falling through the water to draw some fish in. So I'll keep doing that. I'll stick to just potting in the very odd small ball on this line. I might just see how it goes, but I expect to have to top this up after a couple of more decent fish. Then hopefully the fish will move on to that more positively fed line later on. It's a good sign that there's odd fish kicking about now. It's a great sign. You know what, when I was talking to the camera a minute ago I shipped out and I didn't want to put the pole in the bump bar because I thought it might have made a bit of noise on the microphone and that cast I didn't get a thing didn't get a touch stopped talking to the camera swung my rig out properly put it in the bump bar and it literally settled and went under with 
the biggest fish of the day I've hooked so far. It just goes to show how important it is that your presentation's bang on. I'm sure there's loads there now on that negatively fed line, but if you don't do it exactly how they want it, you don't get a bite. Winds me up sometimes, but makes it good fun as well. Yeah, it's a nice bream, this one. There you go. And here's a good couple of pound. Right in the top lip. Here we go. Get out there, get another one. Only a little one, this one. But what's happened is, is um, as I say, I wasn't getting any bites at all over my real positive line, but it felt like fish were coming to feed. So I got another section out the hold all, had a little plumb up at 16 meters, past my positive line, fed a little ball of ground bait there with a few loose live maggots in it, rested it 10 minutes, gone on it and lo and behold there's a few fish kicking about there now so it just goes to show that the fish wanted to come to a bit of bait today but didn't want to sit over that big quantity of bait so certainly shows the worth of feeding a couple of swims in a couple of different ways that's for sure you know if I'd have just um, hedged all my bets on a positive swim today don't think I would have caught a lot. So I'll try out on this um, new line, if you like, again at 16 metres, past, more, past that nice big bed of bait. And uh, it will be interesting to see if I get another one. I've had a couple there now. And that really does show that the fish were in the area, but fishing over that big bed of bait just wasn't right today for whatever reason ticked over nicely on that negative line but as I was mentioning before you really need somewhere else to go when you top up that line loose feeding wasn't right today for whatever reason I don't know to be honest because the light rig was best by far but loose feeding just just wasn't any good maybe it's spreading the bait too far with the amount of fish you got in your peg I don't know but you don't have to know to be honest all the time as long as you clock that something's not right and do something about it that's all you need to do. But it's certainly been an interesting day. Let's see if I can get one more. And then we look at what we got in the old keep sack. There we go, just nailed into the last one of the day. Feels a nice fish. I don't know what this is to be honest. It might be another F1 or it might just be a big skimmer. Come Brazine. It's a nice fish to hopefully finish on anyway. Let's get him in and um, we get out what we got. We've not got loads, but it's been a really rewarding day because every every bite's been genuinely hard to hard come by, should I say. So it's been one of those days. To be honest, it's been one of those days the reason that makes you want to come to a big lake like this. It's not slap bang wallop getting a bite every chuck, but when you do get a bite, it's rewarding, you know? Oh yeah, so not probably the biggest bream I've caught all day. Yeah, when every time that float goes under, it's exciting stuff. There you go. Biggest bream in the day for me. Get him in the get him back in there with his mates and then have a look at what we got.